What's up guys? Welcome back to Tap and Turn Gaming. This is Jay and this is another Commander 2014 deck unboxing. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this video we'll be taking a look at the Mono Blue Commander deck titled Peer Through Time that includes 15 brand new magic cards. And as you can see here, our old friend from Time Spiral, Teferi, is back in Planeswalker form. Teferi, Temporal Arc, uh, Archmage. So let's flip this around here and take a look at the back. You know, we have a nice little picture of Teferi here on the back. We also have some uh, previews of some of the cards that are in the deck. But uh, let's take a look at this little paragraph here for Peer Through Time. Teferi Temporal Archmage manipulates the flow of time itself. This Planeswalker Commander uses an arsenal of tricks to keep his options open and his opponents guessing. With the battlefield safely under control, he sends forth massive blue creatures to, to deliver the killing blow. Pretty interesting. You know, then we got our uh, list of here of the other Commander decks that are available to purchase. And then the content, same as always, the 100 card commander deck, a foil sized, a foil, sorry, foil oversized commander card, 10 double sided token cards, a deck storage box, a deck strategy insert, and a rules reference card. So, that pretty much sums up all the stuff on the box. So, let's uh, crack open Teferi's deck and see what he has to offer us with his peer through time deck. So we get our deck here in the deck storage box, peer through time. And then we get our oversized foil of Teferi, Temporal Archmage, and we're going to take a look at him right now. So he is a six cost blue planeswalker. He's the most expensive out of the five. Most of them cost five, uh, Duretti being the least expensive one at four, but he ca uh, Teferi costs six, but he comes in with more loyalty counters. He comes in to play with five. And his first ability is plus one. Look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library. It's pretty good uh, top deck manipulation. You get to put something in your hand and then filter something on the bottom. His uh, next ability is minus one. Untap up to four target permanents. That could be very very good depending on what permanence you untap I mean you could potentially untap lands with that you know you could you know pay something for four minus one untap those four lands and you basically just got on the board for free and then his emblem his last ability in minus 10 you get an emblem with you may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control on any player's turn anytime you could cast an instant that's really, really good. Being able to activate Planeswalker's abilities on anybody's turn, anytime you could play an instant, is pretty ridiculous. So, you know, every you know player's turn, you can plus one, plus one, plus one, you know, to keep drawing cards and filtering cards on the bottom of your deck. And then, as always, as all the other commanders from this set, they have that added little passive ability down there on the bottom where Teferi Temporal Archmage can be your commander. So, you know, that's the big thing with this set, with the Planeswalkers being able to be commanders of your deck. But yeah, so that's uh, Teferi Temporal Archmage. Let's stick him back here. Let's, uh, let's open up the deck storage box and take out the contents. Here we have the deck. Front and center we have the Teferi Emblem. And then the rest of the contents are just your strategy insert and your rules reference card. Not really going to take a look at those. Okay, so let's crack open the Peer Through Time deck and see what it has to offer. Okay, so front and center again, we got the Teferi emblem. And now we're going to see the tokens that we get in this deck, and these are double-sided. This particular token has a lot of rule texting. 
It's a fish token, and whenever this creature dies, you get a 6-6 six, six blue whale. And then when that creature dies, you get a 9-9 nine, nine blue kraken. So that's interesting. And on the back of that, we have a, a zombie token. Then we have a whale token that goes with the fish token. And another zombie, then there's your kraken that goes with the fish and the whale. Another zombie. Alright, we're just going to rip through these tokens now. Green apes. That's interesting. Okay, now we're in the basic lands. A lot of these are going to be islands, so we're just going to rip through these real quick. Excuse the telephone ringing in the background. Okay, so here is our standard size of uh, Teferi Temporal Archmage. We already took a look at him. Here we have Stitcher Geralf. He's a 5 cost 3 4 legendary human wizard where you can pay 2 colorless and a blue and tap him. And each player puts the top 3 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Exile up to 2 creature cards put into graveyards this way. Put an XX blue zombie creature token onto the battlefield where X is the total power of the cards exiled this way. Uh, he's been mentioned on cards from the Innistrad block. He's actually mentioned on uh, Ghoul Caller uh, Jissa as well. So, you know, he's been mentioned in some of the Magic comic books. He's also been mentioned on flavor texting of some cards previously, but now we actually have a creature version of him. And he's pretty cool. Uh, he basically lets you mill every player and then you can exile cards from their graveyards that ne doesn't necessarily have to be opponent's graveyards you can do your own but basically he takes creature cards that you milled off of people's decks and he stitches them together into a big menacing nasty zombie creature so he's pretty cool i like him and then we have Lorthos the Tidemaker. He's a reprint, but he's a 8 cost 8-8. Eight, eight. When he attacks, you may pay 8 colorless if you do tap up to 8 target permanents and they don't untap during the next untap step, so that's pretty cool. Here we have Dulcet Sirens, 3 cost 1-3, where you can pay a blue and tap it. Target creature attacks, target opponent this turn if able. So that's pretty interesting. And you can morph it for 1 blue, so that's pretty cool. Here we have Reef Worm, the reason why we have the Fish and Whale and Kraken tokens. When he dies, uh, he's a 4 cost 01, when he dies you get a 3 3 blue fish, and then when that dies you get a 6 6 blue whale, and then when that dies you get a 9 9 blue Kraken. So pretty interesting. Here we have Ixadron, 5 cost illusion creature as it enters the battlefield. Turn all other non token creatures face down. They're 2 2 creatures. Uh, Ixodron's power and toughness are each equal to the number of face-down creatures on the battlefield. So he, uh, he could potentially make all of your opponent's big nasty threats into little 2-2 two -two not-so-threats. So he, he's pretty cool. And then he gets bigger for every creature that he turned face-down and basically turned into a 2-2 two -two vanilla dude. Here we have Storm Surge Kraken, 5 cost 5-5 five, five with Hexproof, and the new ability Lieutenant. The Lieutenant thing, I really like it. Basically, if you control your commander and this on the board, this card will do something very, very cool. So this one, Lieutenant, as long as you control your commander, Storm Surge Kraken gets plus 2, plus 2, and has whenever it becomes blocked, you may draw 2 cards. Pretty cool. Frost Titan, he's kind of meh. Sphinx of Dwar Isle, 6 cost 5, 5 flyer with Shroud, and you may look at the top card of your library. He's okay. Sphinx of the Magosi, 6 cost 6, 6 flyer, where you can pay 3 to draw a card, and he gets bigger. Phyrexian and Jester, I really like him. Um, Creature Exile is always very, very nice. 7 cost 3, 3. When he comes in, you can exile a creature and imprint it on him. And then he gets plus X plus Y, where X is the creature that you exile the power, and Y is its toughness. I really like him a lot. Sphinx of Uthun, 7 cost 5, 6 flyer. When he comes in, reveal the top 5 cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile in your hand, the other into your graveyard. Hover Guard Sweepers. 8 cost 5, 6 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you may return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. 
Breaching Leviathan, a 9 cost 9-9, nine, nine, enters the battle. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, tap all non-blue creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controls. Next untap steps, that's pretty cool. Deep Sea Kraken, another reprint there. Infinite Reflection, I believe this is another reprint, but it's a 6 cost blue aura. When it enters the battlefield... Attached to a creature, each other non-token creature you control becomes a copy of that creature, and non-token creatures you control enter the battlefield as a copy of Enchanted Creature. So it's a very interesting card. So, you know, if you put this on a, I don't know, Darksteel Colossus, all of your creatures that are non-tokens become a copy of Darksteel Colossus, and then every creature that you play after that is a Darksteel Colossus, so it's a pretty cool card. Uh, well of Ideas, 6 cost, blue enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw 2 cards, and then at the beginning of each other player's up, uh, draw step, rather, that player draws an additional card. At the beginning of your draw step, draw 2 additional cards. So, you know, another another card for all you Nekusar players out there that, you know, <laughs> want more tools to do mean things. Uh... <laughs> There's a card for you. Uh, we have Cyclonic Rift. Pretty good uh, blue sweeper. If you just pay it for its regular cost, you just bounce a non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. But if you overload it for seven, it bounces each non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. Here we have Cackling Counterpart. Three cost blue instant. Put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of target creature you control. And you can flash it back for seven. So that's pretty cool. We have Domineering Will, 4 cost blue instant, target player gains control of up to 3 target non-attacking creatures until end of turn, untap those creatures, they block this turn if able. It's an interesting card. Intellectual Offering, one of the new cards from the set, it's one of those kind of political cards. 5 cost blue instant, choose an opponent, you and that player each draw 3 cards. Then choose an opponent, untap all non-land permanents you control, and all non-land permanents that player controls. Sorry, I just bumped the camera there. Let me just try to readjust. So there's uh, Intellectual Offering. Here we have Stroke of Genius. Uh, 3 cost with an X cost instant, uh, target player draws X cards, so X draw spell is always nice. Rite of Replication, 4 cost blue sorcery, you get a token on the battlefield, it's a copy of target creature, and if you kicked it, you get 5 tokens of it instead. Really good card. Uh, Aether Gale, 5 cost blue sorcery, returns 6 target non-land permanents to their owner's hands, pretty sweet. Distorting Wake, 3 blue and X, return target return X target non-land permanents to their owner's hands. That's pretty cool. Steel Hellkite, he's nice. Sapphire Medallion, lowers the casting cost of your blue spells by one colorless. Crown of Doom, three cost artifact. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets plus two plus O oh until end of turn, and you can pay two colorless to make target player other than Crown of Doom's owner gain control of it. Activate this ability only during your turn. Pretty interesting card. Uh, Niven Rawls Disc. Four cost artifact. Comes to play tap. You can pay one colorless and tap it to blow up all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Here we have Coral Atoll. Kind of one of the Ravnica bounce lands. Ghost Quarter. We've seen that in every deck. Lonely Sandbar. Cycling Land. Myriad Landscape. We've seen this in a few of the decks. Taps are colorless, or you can pay two colorless and tap it to get two basic lands that share a type onto the battlefield tapped. Another cycling land. Tectonic Edge is very nice. You can pay a colorless and tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target non-basic land. Uh, but you can only activate that if an opponent controls four or more lands, but you know most of the time they probably will. Zoetic Cavern, a morph land, it taps for colorless and you can make it a dude and then, you know, morph it into a land. Here we have Azur Mage, 2 cost 2 1, pay 4 draw a card, pretty cool. Fathom Seer, another reprint, now we're into the commons and uncommons, I'm just going to rip through these. Fog Bank, Will Bunder is pretty cool, Riptide Survivor, Seagate Oracle... 
Shaper Parasite, another morph card. Mold Drifter is really nice. Good card draw. Brine Elemental is pretty cool. Fool's Demise. Pongify, oh, that's why we have the green ape creature tokens. Uh, into the Royal, bouncing stuff. Turn to Frog, turn a creature into 1 1 blue frog. Exclude, tar counter target creature spell and draw our card. That's pretty cool. Dismiss, counter target spell and draw our card. Call to mind, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. It's pretty cool. Compulsive research. Target player draws three cards, then discards two cards unless they discard a land. Concentrate, draw three cards. Rush of Knowledge, draw cards equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. That can potentially draw you a ton of cards. Uh, Artisan of Kozilek, Eldrazi, when you cast him, you res a creature from your graveyard straight to play, and he has Annihilator 2, Everflowing Chalice, we've seen that. Tormod's Crypt, sack it to exile all cards from someone's graveyard. Soul Ring, naturally. Mind Stone, Acceleration and Card Draw, Sky Diamond, Blue Mana Rock. Swiftfoot Boots has been in every deck. Commander Sphere has been in every deck. You know, taps are any color of your commander's color identity, and you can sack it to draw a card. Unstable Obelisk, we've seen this in quite a few of the decks. It allows you to pay seven and tap it and sack it to blow up any permanent, and it will tap for a colorless. Worn Power Stone comes into play tap, taps for two colorless. Assault Suit, we've seen this in a few of the decks. Basically, you can suit this up on a creature and you can start passing it around the table, let people gain control of it for a turn, and then you get it back. So, pretty interesting card that could make for some fun, interesting moments. Uh, Thrawn Dynamo, tap it for three colorless. Ergolem's Eye taps for two colorless. Dreamstone Hedron taps for three colorless, or you can pay three and tap it and sacrifice it to draw three cards. So yeah, that more or less sums up the mono blue deck, Peer Through Time. Uh, overall, pretty decent deck. I mean, I personally, myself, I'm not really a blue player myself. Sorry, I'm just going to try to adjust the camera back here. Um, I'm not really too big of a blue player myself. So I wasn't, you know, really looking for anything from this deck in particular, but I did just want to get all five decks and crack them open for you guys so you could see what they, you know, what they had. But yeah, that uh, sums up the Peer Through Time deck. Just going to quickly uh, grab the creatures that were in here that could potentially be the commander of this deck if you wanted them to be. And those are Lorthos, Ty Lorthos the Tidemaker, Stitcher Gerolf is pretty cool, and obviously Teferi, uh, Temporal Archmage. I mean, if I had to pick a commander for this deck, it would probably be Teferi. Although I really do like Stitcher Gerolf. I, I just like seeing creature cards uh, printed that have been you know previously mentioned on other cards and in the lore of Magic, and you know we don't get an actual card for them right away, but when they do make them. You know, it's just cool to see what they do. And he does some pretty cool stuff. But yeah, again, that's pretty much it for this deck, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please throw out a uh, thumbs up or a comment. We love to hear your comments and suggestions. And if you're not currently subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button. We also really, really do appreciate that as well. You know, if you want to keep informed on our channel, you know, for when we make new videos, we do, we generally do them three times a week. So hit that subscribe button and check out more content from us. But yeah, this has been Jay with Tap and Turn Gaming. Hope, again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll catch you later in another video. Thanks for watching.